Welcome to Outback Outdoors. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos. To stock or not to stock? That is the question. Pick your stocks carefully. You've seen this deer, you've targeted, hey, this is a good buck. Understand that bull hunting is a game of, of numbers. It's a percentage game. As you bull hunt more, especially spotting and stalking mule deer, you're gonna find out that your ratio is one to five, one to three, one to 10. All de it's all determined on where you're hunting, right? How many deer are in the area? I don't know how many times I've had a beautiful high percentage, what I thought was a high percentage play, and then to come to find out there's 17 more deer in there. I didn't see it. Okay? So find what that is. Understand the more stocks you go on, the closer you're gonna be to see on the deal. Okay? So it's a numbers game. Take advantage of your high percentage stocks. What does that mean? Well, a high percentage stock means I'm gonna get within my effective range, unseen for sure. Then we'll, we'll creep that next whatever, set ourselves up and we wait and we get patient and we, we need the deer to kind of cooperate, maybe stand or something. We'll talk a little bit about that later, okay? But take advantage of the high percentage stocks. Has anybody got a buddy who if he sees a deer, he's gone? Let's go. You're like, whoa, wait dude, hold up. He's walking. He might bed right there or he might bed on that mountain. Let's hold up, hold up there. Rambo, right? So we have to, or you have the friend, and I have this friend, oh no, I can't, no, it's not right, it's not right. What do you mean it's not right? He's blind in the left eye, he's got a freaking sinus infection. Dude, he's in that, that cut, I mean, we can go kill him right now. Oh no, man, oh, the wind's gonna change. Okay, so there's that, you have to play, you gotta be aggressive, but you gotta have some common sense. So if you have a high percentage stock, you need to go. But you also have to not be afraid to fail. It's a numbers game. Don't be afraid to fail. But don't be stupid. We'll get into that in just a sec. Okay. I like to show my failures because I do it a lot. Okay? I'm here. The buck is bedded right here. Okay? I'm going, I can get to 22 yards of him without that sucker even seeing me. Now, do I have a shot or not? I don't know. So I send my little buddy Dave, Dave Baronio, up and around with the decoy. And we'll talk about this. I use this technique all the time. He's about 150 yards away on another ridge. And he pops that thing up. Notice it's a whitetail decoy. Guess what? The mule deer don't care. All I'm trying to do is get in position so this buck will look and see him and maybe stand up to see what's going on and give me a shot. I'm completely where I can see the top of his head, but I can't shoot him till he stands. Now he's looking at Dave. I come to full draw, completely unseen, and shoot. Now, before you go patting me on the back, I walk up there expecting to find a good bloody arrow, and I shot into the bank. What I didn't realize is his rope was behind the bank because I couldn't see it from that angle. All I could see was his head. So when he stood up, my whole idea was to slide it by the back rib. But really, I would have been up in the chest and I would have been too far because he was pulling the weight. So I put it where I thought it was. That the sun was in my eyes. Let me see what other excuse do I have. Um, I sneezed. Okay. I missed. Exactly. I missed. But, did you see? It worked. In my opinion, whose fault was that? I, I made a mistake. Don't be afraid to fail. And I'll be honest, I get a lot of flack for that to this day. But it's fun, it's fun. Let the buck find his day bed. Do you guys, have you ever heard of that? So, mule deer are, they, they're known for this. Anybody listen to the Kafaru cast? Okay, um, Aaron talks about this a lot. What a buck will do is, depending upon the time of year, but if you're early September, well, it doesn't matter the time of year. 
they're going to go feed, then they're going to work down, and they're going to find some cover. Okay? If it's in September, it's probably going to get a little warm in the high country, and they're going to find thermal cover that's going to give them what? Shade. Right? Okay? If it's December and it's colder than a you-know-what, they're going to find something that's going to be out of the wind. Doesn't necessarily have to be in the shade, but they're going to find some thermal cover that provides them protection from that. And they're going to bed. I normally don't stalk them when they first bed. Because what happens is, I don't know if they're going to bed for 15 minutes, an hour, or two hours. But they are going to get up as soon as the sun shifts. They're going to get up and they might move five feet or they might, might be move 50 yards and reestablish a bed that's going to be their day bed. That's when you have the long period of time to make your stop. Now, I have killed deer in the morning, but I've got to be honest, I was just lucky. I, literally, I looked around a bush and there was a buck bedding right there. And I was already in the perfect spot. And so I just snuck around and shot him. <laughs> but that wasn't because I was far away and I worked my way in. If you're going to do that, wait. Wait for them to find their day bed. And that's going to be when the, the uh, sun gets high enough to position or the wind changes direction and they're going to find that, that day bed. Okay? That's when you be aggressive. Okay? But there is a problem. You can also be stupid. Use common sense. Okay? Here's why. Live to stock another day. The other thing about mule deer is if you bump a mule deer, do they go just over the hill? Maybe. Most likely they're probably going to the next county. Especially in the high country. Because to them, going over the next hill might seem like nothing. To us, it's like, Fred, I gotta go over that mountain range over there, because there they go. So sometimes it's okay to back off and say, okay, this isn't right. I'm gonna try and look at this from a different angle. Live to stock another day. This is probably one of the most, if I leave you with one thing, I wanna leave you with this. You have to know the exact location of your target buck. What's gonna happen the moment you find a buck and then you have to drop off, come around, get the wind right, and pop back over on top of it? He's not in your eyesight, is he? How do you know the exact location of the buck? You bring him along. And he sits his comfortably large butt there with the spotting scope. And, guys, this means okay. This means okay. This means he ran away. I mean, make up your own deal. You can, all you gotta do is pick a binocular 200, 300 yards away, and I can look at my spotter and know the buck is still there. I don't know how many times I have screwed up because I couldn't see the buck, I didn't have a spotter, and I got impatient. And then, and I get up over there, and guess what? It all looks different. Oh, uh, is it that tree? Is it, is it that tree? Oh, crap, you know? And then that way your spotter can go, hey, stupid, go that way, you know, or whatever, right? And, and they can kind of guide you in. There are states that you can use radios. Check your regs. Some people don't want to. I know a lot of our guys don't like to use radios. Um, I have killed some deer using radios. But it's always in a state that it's legal. I know Pope and Young I don't think recognizes. I've never entered a Pope and Young animal, but... I know they don't recognize it if you use electronic communications. I understand that. That's up to you. I'm not going to dictate what you do. Have your spider, spotter guide you in. That gives you that warm and fuzzy that the buck is still there. I can take my time. Close the distance. Know your effective range. Is anybody here for my seminar on Thursday? No, because I had like, yeah, you were. Because I had like six people. Thursday was a little bit slow. But on Thursday, I talked about understanding your effective range. I'm not talking about the effective range you can stand at the at your uh, local archery range or your back backyard, flat ground, no wind, just laying them in there at 60. That's not your effective range. What is your effective range with the conditions you're hunting in? Are you on an uneven ground? Is there a 15 mile per hour wind side to side? You add factors like that in and all of a sudden my 60 yard, let's say that was my effective range on a calm day, standing flat-footed, 
becomes 40 or maybe 35. But you need to know your effective range beforehand because that's what you want to get into that pocket. So you're in your effective range, you're within that distance, now what? Be patient. Once you get into that bubble, that kill zone, if you will, the hard work's done. You're there. Now, be patient. Now, my question to you is, when's he gonna get up? Five minutes? Five hours. What do you do? Well, this is what we wanna talk about. We wanna know. Let's have some options here. You're there, the hard work's done. What do you do? Here's a situation. Uh, Slo Sloan Brown is a good friend of mine. He, he runs, or he used to, he actually just left Yeti. He was the uh, hunting manager for Yeti. And he came out on a hunt with me. And they were looking around, and they end up spotting this buck. He's in a pretty good little cut, okay? And he bends down right there, right by this big old juniper. Nice shady patch. The wind is coming down the draw. It's not whipping. It's probably five to eight miles per hour. Not a bad deal. The bugs are horrible this time of year, too. That's the other thing. You see their heads shaking. That'll get them on edge, too. So he's going to start working up. Lane Walters, who's one of my cameramen, he's, he's actually, this is his footage. He's about 150 yards away. He's acting as a spotter for him. So he's seven yards from this buck. What do you do? He's like, I don't want to stand here all day. So he decides he's going to pick up a piece of wet dirt, make it into a dirt claw. I'm not a big fan of this. He clips onto his release on his bow, switches the clump to his left hand, and throws it. It comes to full draw. And wax the buck. So it worked! I mean, he was, he did it right. I can't say, I wouldn't have done that. Every time I do that, they're from their bed to a flat out sprint. And I'm seeing them go over the next freaking ridge. But it worked for him. But what he did is he got in a situation rather than, he could have stood there. I guarantee that buck before dark would have stood up. Now this is about 11.30 in the morning. Okay? So he could have stood there till that buck stood up, right? He was pretty stoked. I mean, look at this deer. That's a pretty decent deer. And to be seven yards from him, be able to see the top of his antlers, and then still get him to pause long enough at full draw, yeah, that was a pretty good deal. Thanks for watching Outback Outdoors. We encourage you to comment below, and as always, like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos.